All right, so normally I, I try to record my diatribe before dinner on Wednesday so I can get the show out early for patrons and get to be done working before midnight. But this week, I didn't even start writing the damn thing until almost midnight. I just, I kept hitting refresh, staring at that election map, waiting for some clarity, eager to properly calibrate my anger for this one. Now, I didn't exactly get clarity. Hopefully you have some by the time you hear this, right? Hopefully things continue the way they're looking and Biden takes it in the squeaker. And if that's the case, we only need to turn our anger up to 10.99879. Because, you know, as idiotic as this outcome is, at least it doesn't appear to be the stupidest thing imaginable, which, let's face it, is what we've come to expect from this dumbass fucking country. And, you know, all that being said, I'd say this is dumber than 2016. Right. Like, like even assuming a Biden victory, knowing everything we know now about Donald Trump after four years of corruption, lies, incompetence, fraud, negligence, vituperations, racism, misogyny, xenophobia, self-dealing, nepotism, divisiveness, and binding all that shit together like the mortar, the relentless frothing at the mouth stupidity after all that. The best we as a nation can muster is a tepid, nah, you probably not, I guess. That's it? I was, I was so fucking wrong. I, I thought because I had such a low opinion of the American populace, I couldn't possibly be overestimating them. I thought so little of us that it didn't even seem mathematically possible for us to be worse than I gave us credit for. But we are. For there to be even the remotest chance of America rescuing some shred of its international dignity, we needed a goddamn landslide. We needed a mandate of historic proportions. We needed to stand up and say enough in a single fucking voice. And I genuinely thought that's what we do. I genuinely believed that we would have never made this mistake in 2016 if we really knew what we were getting into. And I was wrong. Millions of us, tens of millions of us are just willing to march blindly into some theocratic idiocracy, even as the bodies drop by the thousands around us. And for what? What did they get out of it? You know, it's, it's literally just that they get to win. It's spite. There's no agenda. Trump hasn't accomplished anything. He hasn't even promised to accomplish anything this time around. He literally ran with no platform other than to agree with himself. And that was enough for damn near half of American voters. And I honestly don't know what to do with that. It seems to undercut the whole foundation of humanism to me. Is it naive to hope that these fucking idiots will ever be worth our trouble? Should, should we just look after ourselves, gather in a tight circle and point our guns outward in all directions? I mean, as stupid as that fucking sounds, it's getting really hard to argue that there's anything more sensible to do. We're surrounded by idiots that would send you to the gas chamber just to avoid losing a fucking Twitter fight. In 2016, I was wondering if we could be safe. In 2020, I'm left wondering whether we should be. And look, I don't want to promote hate. I don't want to say we should hate the other side, but we should kind of hate the other side. We're talking about people who have no particular qualms about kidnapping children as a deterrent to their parents. And if we insist on continuing to imbue people like that with some kind of basic humanity, we risk finding ourselves forever chained to this station. This position where we stand there gawking at the electoral map going, how the fuck can any of this even be close? To ascribe some kind of moral foundation to the average American person is to reject all the observable evidence at this point. I'm not saying that the people on the other side are evil. I'm just saying that their actions are functionally indistinguishable from evil. I mean, keep telling yourself that that asshole with the Trump sign in his yard is the kind of person that would run into a burning building to save a neighbor. He wouldn't put on a fucking mask to save a neighbor. And whether that's because he's evil, stupid, or undereducated and misled doesn't matter much when you're that neighbor. Our nation is rotten all the way through. It is deeply, fundamentally, foundationally broken. 
And our tendency to see the good in the people around us, our, our combination of empathy and cultural blindness leaves us in a terrible position if we want to fix it. We refuse to recognize the problem because to truly grasp how evil and shitty America is, you have to admit how evil and shitty the people you care about are. Your friends and your family. You have to admit that Uncle Frank isn't just an asshole. He's evil. Your Aunt Kathy isn't just stupid. She's dangerous. And even after you just watched them spend four years pledging undying allegiance to someone as unapologetically malicious as Donald Trump, you still bristle when I apply terms like that to them. Even now, as you watch him leap to his defense and threaten to take up arms against democracy, you can't help but think, evil, Noah, really, evil, yes, really. We can't afford that kind of naivety anymore. This is a life and death struggle and the deaths are already in the six figure range. We need to stare the ugliness of America right in the fucking face without pretending that America is some immutable system that happens in Washington, D.C. and state capitol buildings. It's us. We need to see how evil and terrible this nation is, even if we can only see some of its blemishes when we look in a fucking mirror. Because the story about the emperor's new clothes takes on a much darker tone when it's 20 degrees below zero. And it has never been colder than it is right now.